Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, Wednesday, midweek mix-up, and uh, we have a few things. First thing I want to get to is I picked up some really cool wrenches, and I, I want your thoughts on these, so let's go okay, check them so out. so I kind of pride myself in, uh, in the fact that I think I have a pretty good eye for quality tools, and I saw these on eBay, which I, I'm kind of staying off of, and it's not working out so good. But this, uh, I saw these on there and they were $4.95 for the set and like $7 shipping and nobody bid on it. I said, I like these wrenches. There's something about them. Just look at the style here. Look at this little, you know, a, a great place for your name, whatever your company is. I never heard of Esco before, but I said, wow, this is just a, a beautiful, right? Look at this wrench made in the USA. Uh, it looks like a solid wrench. It's really nicely designed, right? It's got the right offsets and everything. Each wrench is is identical but small. Uh, I don't know if this is the complete set, but it's close. You know, it's got a, a popular sizes, so I went for it and I got it. When it came back, I looked and uh, it turns out that Esco, and the reason these wrenches look so familiar, like quality-wise, is because they were a major manufacturer for the Craftsman brand. Now, it all started in 1900. The Moore Company uh, started making uh, tools, and then they were acquired by Sears, and uh, um, they started making, actually, tools for Sears and Roebuck. And then uh, uh, by the 60s, they were really heavily uh, involved with uh, Craftsman tools, making all kinds of... Uh, of the Craftsman uh, series, like the V-series ratchets and, and things like that. So you can see the quality, you can see, once I mentioned that, it probably, you know, a lot of you probably said, I could see the Sears, you know, in these tools, but Esco, never heard of them before, never seen their tools branded by themselves, but um, they, went, they went out of Springfield, Massachusetts. They went all the way up to uh, 1990, and I think that, uh, you know, eventually Apex got a hold of them. You know what happens when that happens. Anyway, what do you think of these wrenches? Pretty pretty sweet looking wrenches, aren't they? I mean, just the design. I really like them. And I want to know if anybody's ever seen these wrenches before, these type or anything with Esco. Okay, on. next up, as you know, as collectors, we all basically start the same way. We try and collect a... Uh, uh, quantity first we try and get as many items as we can for our collection and then as your collection accumulates you start to get more quality but then the problem is you're tripping over the quantity that you've accumulated so uh, good news for some people bad news for others you know I'm, I'm, I'm at that point now where I'm oversaturated with stuff however uh, for some of you that are just getting into it or looking for certain tools I have a, a really great resource for you a friend of mine by the name of Jesse, he has a, a channel and, uh, you know, it's funny that uh, myself and Dave, uh, Old Sneelock and and, uh, and 357 Magdad have been uh, following him for some time and we've seen the tools that have accumulated and he's uh, up to here. With now, tools. Jesse's got a really good eye for tools too, so he knows what uh, collectible tools, things like that. And uh, the best part is that... Um, He's getting ready to to uh, to move some of them because he wants to get a bigger shop and he wants to uh, you know kind of make this into a hobby of his you know uh, contacting people and and getting tools and he has a Craigslist ad so um, if you're interested in any kind of tools or or even just want to see some of the cool things he comes across I'm going to have a link to his channel and uh, you check him out and uh, and if you are looking for any type of tool just uh, drop him a note. And just say, yeah, Jesse, I'm looking for pipe wrenches or I'm looking for a uh, perfect handle screwdriver, perfect handle wrench, whatever you're looking for. He'll put your name on a list. And when he comes across them, because he comes across them cheap because he does a lot of, uh, you know, bulk buying. So uh, he'll give you, our, uh, you know, let you know, say I came across this or that or I'll take pictures of what he has. It's a really good way for uh, the new tool collector or somebody who's been in it for a long time and you don't want to deal with, you know, some people on eBay and things like that. Uh, it's always good to have somebody, a good resource. So like I'll put his link in the description. So uh, stop by, tell him I said hello, and uh, I think you'll you'll enjoy to see the kind of stuff that he comes across. Okay, next up I got these pair of uh, plies that came with a uh, lot that I bought. And uh, these are Proto. I could see Proto under there, right? And it looks like a 258 model number. I've never seen these before, but they feel so, and look at them, look at the embellishments and the handle here. Really, I, I mean, when I grabbed these out of the, the lot, I was like, wow, and here's the best part. You see up front there, that's that engineering uh, for grabbing 
uh, bolts and nuts from the front, and that is just beautiful. Look at the drawers are in great shape. We're going to do a quick cleanup on these because I just want to use these and I love them. Okay, here we are at the post wire brush evaluation. You can see here it does say Proto uh, 258, and you can see manufactured USA. And I believe this might be a date code over here on the handle. You see over here, it's kind of uh, hard to see, but I believe down here it's a J11 and a zero. Do you see that? I believe that might be a date code on this side probably stamped the same but long since worn off you could see remnants of the J110 and uh, everything's coming good so let's let's go to the next step Now you know my favorite part. Remember what these pliers look like before we started. And we are calling these done. Uh, boy, these are really a sweet pair of pliers, aren't they? You can see I was able to keep the uh, the lettering, all the lettering, which is, uh, uh, you know, you're always restricted when you got light stamping like that. I did it in that belt that don't show fingerprints yet. Gives you a mirror finish, you know, and uh, look at this. Just a, a really nice pair of pliers, aren't they? I did the inside, polished all the inside out, and I was even able, which I'm shocked, to keep the date code. And you could see over here, uh, here it is, the J11 and the 0. And I was trying to look that up on, on uh, the date codes, and I just can't find it. Now, Proto started in about uh, 1949. They were uh, a subsidiary of, uh, of Plum Tools. And the J.P. Dave, J.D. Davidson company had uh, had some workings in it, and then it has a, a, an interesting history on these uh, on this company. But Proto, as everybody knows, was a really a highly uh, respected brand back in the, uh, the you know the late fifties, sixties, things like that, and a lot of military contracts went. Now, this there. style of pliers is traditionally known as like gas style pliers, is because. Um, uh, a lot of times they were used by uh, gas servicemen to uh, close and open uh, different of the, uh, the valves, the gas valves, things like that. But if you notice here, um, the teeth on here, this will work on a variety of different uh, sizes, plus also this front one. And let me show you how that works. Now, the beauty of these tile pliers is that the array of sizes that this will work on. You can see here, you can actually get a grip here on larger bolts like this, and it will give you a good grip because this does grip the points. Uh, medium bolts, you can still use it here and, and get a good grip on it where it doesn't slip. And then when you're working down to the smaller sizes, you can use the smaller jaws here to get a, uh, a good grip and a good purchase on these bolts. Now, one of my favorite features of this pliers is that if you notice, if you try and grab round stock, and here we have a cutoff bolt, but you can see here we're using regular pliers that have a flat jaw in the front, and it's it's a poor uh, grip, a poor purchase on there, because you only have two small points grabbing that. No matter how hard you grip it, you're always going to wiggle around. However, with the engineer style or this type of ply, you see the grip in the front. When you grip down on here, you get a really good purchase that you can hold it. And if you have to clean a bolt or you have to uh, turn a bolt, it's just a terrific. So that, that really makes up for uh, any type of uh, flaws in a plier is when you have that type of opening in the front. So these are uh, many companies, Utica, a lot of different companies made this style pliers, but you don't usually see the protos. And when you do, they're either very expensive or very cheap. And that's so when you find them very cheap, pick them up and look how nice the embellishments on the handle came out, huh? And uh, just a lovely pair of pliers. If you do see a pair of these at the flea market for a dollar or two, make sure you grab them. You won't be sorry. Uh, just a nice pair okay, of pliers. Okay, next up, real quick, uh, one of our subscribers, by uh, uh, he goes by WP, uh, had asked how he can find these. having trouble getting the center, the exact center for certain stock. I thought I would just cover that real quick because a lot of times that comes in necessary if you're going to 
for anything, for drilling or for turning on the lathe. Well, so sometimes let's check it's it out. important for us to find the center of a piece of stock for one reason or another, whether it be square stock or round stock. For square stock, it's kind of easy because you just take a straight edge, you put it from corner to corner, you run your pencil across the uh, the straight edge like this, and that'll give you the center mark right here. That makes an X from corner, and that'll give you the approximate center, especially if it's pretty square, the stock. And then you can mount that now, on Now, when lathe. you want to mount that piece of stock onto the lathe, what you do is you take a, uh, this is a, a homemade a punch, a scratch hole, more or less, but it, it's a punch that's put into a wood handle, and you can see how sharp I got the point. And what you do is you go into the middle of where your X was here, and then you press into it, and just give it a little turn like that, because you want to make a little dimple like that. And we do that on both sides you can see here and then what you do in order to mount it in here there's two points and this is called turning between centers and you take the point here and you put it on uh, you take one point on one side and then you line up the other point with the other center here and this side has a little wheel that you can uh, move it into the center here and get it. once you get it centered then you you tighten it up so that it doesn't slip because you, it has to be nice and tight you don't want this to slip when it's turning once it's nice and tight and you got it centered then this is ready to turn using your tools and and to make it into a tool handle now for whatever. round stock it's a little uh, more difficult because you just can't take your your straight edge and go from end to end because you know you could be off by quite a bit so they have these certain tools these special tools to get a, uh, a the center of a round stock and this one here is made you can see this is a, a center uh, square by Stanley you can see the model number there and you see these pins here all you do is you place your round stock uh, against the pins now if the, if it was wider than these two pins you would use these but since they you use the smaller pins since it's smaller than those so once it's rested here and uh, then you would just take your pencil or scribe and you would run a line that way uh, this is the same type over here um, this one's made of plastic or a Lexan and you can see it's got a, a deep V here and it's got a, uh, a 90 degree here you could use this for square stock you could put the square stock here but for round stock stock you would use the uh, the uh, more acute angle now what you do is you place it here like this and uh, you take your pencil and you run it here like this and then you turn it 90 degrees and you do the same thing again now here's the problem now that looks pretty centered right the problem is that because the pencil is so thick and you're uh, scribing against the line, what I like to do, if you really have to be accurate, is turn it again 180 degrees, take another scribe like this, and you do the same thing on this side. And you'll see it'll give you two lines, more or less. Some people do a whole bunch of lines, you know, just coming back and forth around the stock because, it, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. And uh, what happens is eventually you'll see there's some different intersecting lines there. And you say, well, which one's the exact center? And that's the, because your pencil isn't always uh, as accurate as like a scribe. Now you can see when we did these double lines here, the accurate center would be right here. But in wood turning, it don't make too much of a difference because you're going to be taking off more than a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. But in metalworking, it's now something with a different. metal lathe, uh, finding the center of uh, stock couldn't be easier. And what you do, let's say we had to drill a hole in here. And what you do is you place it into your chuck here like this. And then what you would do is you would just bring your tail stock uh, up to here. And you have a little center drill in there. We just put a dimple into the middle, exact middle of our stock. You can see here. So you say, okay, so John, I, you know, that's well and dandy, but I don't have uh, a lay. How do I do this if I have like a drill press? Glad you Okay, asked. we're over at the drill press vise. Great place to be. Now remember, a drill press is nothing but a lathe that's turned on its side. This will be the considered the uh, tail stock and this the head stock. But uh, what we're going to do now, we want to drill. We already put a little center hole in this side. Now we want to put one in this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a drill bit and we're going to place it into the chuck like this and just hand tighten it a little bit. Now we're going to lower the uh, drill press chuck down uh, right here until it's about midway here and lock it. You know, there's usually a lock that you can lock it. So we lock the quill down and now we're going to tighten up the drill press vise on the drill bit, not hard, just very lightly, just to hold it. 
Now that it's held nice and tight, now this is the time that you're going to make sure your drill press is secure. You're going to uh, clamp it down, whatever you have to, to the table. Make sure the table is locked and, and nice and tight. Everything is good and nice and tight. Now what you're going to do is you're going to uh, loosen the chuck because you only had a hand tight. And you're going to loosen the quill and you're going to raise it up. And here's where it gets fun. Now you're going to take the drill bit out of the, just loosen it up a little bit, turn it upside down so the drill bit is facing up and the cutting section is facing up. And then we're going to take our part that we want to center drill and we're going to place it into the drill press, the chuck here. And we have to go all the way up here. And now we're placed in there. And then we're going to tighten this down with the, uh, the chuck key. But first we're going to make sure it's running straight. So we're going to okay, it now that it's in there, now we're going to feed this into the tail stock or the drill press vise and uh, do that. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, what it looks like here. And you'll see that's a perfectly centered hole. Now you could do this with thin stock or anything that'll fit in your drill press to get a centered hole. And it, if you notice, the drill bit might wobble a little bit as it's going in. That's because it's finding the center and it'll always give you a perfectly centered hole. Good little tip to okay, remember. Okay, so in closing, I hope you uh, enjoyed today's episode. Thanks very much for tuning in and make sure you check out Jesse's channel and see if there's any tools you might be looking for. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.